fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet. Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll Silver. Early one afternoon in late November, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were traveling east toward Modoc City, where they planned to meet the masked man's teenage nephew, Dan Reed. How soon Dan reach Modoc City, Kimathari? Late Wednesday night, Tonto. Oh, that day before Thanksgiving. Yes, he'll have a holiday from school. Oh, it's plenty good to spend Thanksgiving together. It'll be good to see him. Oh, me miss Dan. Yes, so do I, Tonto. <laughs> You say word, Dan be glad to stay with us, not go back to school. I like that even more than Dan would. But I want him to get an education. Give gunfire sound, make it come from stage trail. We'll see what it means. Monsieur! Come on, stop. The outlaw who had stopped the stage held a gun on the disarmed guard and driver and ordered them to throw the strong box to the ground. Hey, there's a strong box, you ornery skunk. You won't get away with this fold up like you have the other two jobs, you fool. Shut up and get going. The masked outlaw fired at the lock on the heavy strong box. As the bullet smashed the lock, he heard the Lone Ranger and Tonto approaching. Whoa. Rather than risk being trapped in the open, the stage robber ran to the cover of a huge boulder on the far side of the trail. At that moment, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the bottom of the wooded slope. Oh, 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 oh. The hidden gunman fired and shouted. That shot was just a warning. Clear out of here. Easy, steady, big fellow. Behind that boulder, Tonto. He'll have to show himself to fire accurately. Not right. Get going before I let you have it. We're ready for gunplay if you want it. You ask for it, mister. My next shot will do more than put a hole through your hat. You've got me trapped. You trapped yourself when you picked that boulder for cover. Now throw down your gun. The concealed outlaw took a desperate chance. He showed himself to fire. But the Lone Ranger anticipated the move. A silver bullet smashed the outlaw's gun. You're covered. Do it. Your mask. Keep your hands up. I'll keep him covered, Tonto, while you put the contents of the strong box into our saddlebags. Uh -huh. Now take that bandana from your face. As long as you're covering me, I've no choice. There. Who are you? Clyde Halliday. Uh, money and gold in strong box, Kimasabi. Me put it in saddlebags. When you're finished, we'll tie Halliday's hands and take him to Marshal Fraser in Modoc City. 
There's no price on my head. You'll not get anything for turning me in. You've a crime to answer for. I have a 15-year-old brother to take care of. Where are his parents? Killed in an engine raid when Bobby was two. I'm sorry. He... he doesn't know about me turning crook. I don't want him to know any more than you would if you were in my place. Is he in Modoc City? No, he's at my cabin in Doonesville. We'll try to help him. You expect me to believe that? You'll not worry about boy. Lone Ranger make promise to help him. And him keep word. Don't try to tell me this mass gent's the Lone Ranger. Me tell truth. Him, Lone Ranger. I don't believe it. Well, whether you do or not, we'll try to help you and your brother. Now, Todd will tie your hand. And we'll help you mount and start for Modoc City. <laughs> Marshal Jim Fraser was an old friend of the Lone Ranger and Tonto. After the contents of the express box had been returned to Wells Fargo and the prisoner was behind bars, the masked man sat in the Marshal's lamp-lit office and explained the situation. In view of the fact that his brother Bob needs him, a judge and jury might be lenient with Clyde Halliday. Yeah, they might be. If this were the first time he stopped the stagecoach mystery. But according to the report the garden driver gave me, he's the man who pulled two other holdups. Oh, that changes things. Yeah. I'm sorry about the youngster. So am I. I don't know ride to Doonesville to see him. Are you coming back to town, mister? Yes, we'll be back Wednesday to meet Dan Reed. Oh, then you'll be here for Thanksgiving. Yes, Marshal. Good. We'll be looking for you. Two days later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the small railroad town of Doonesville, some distance west of Modoc City. The masked man waited on the outskirts of town, while Tonto went to look for young Bob Halliday. When the Indian rejoined his friend, he brought bad news and a copy of the Doonesville Herald. May find out Bob Halliday leave town early this morning. Oh, you know where he went? No one in town know that. But me think newspaper explain why him leave. You look there. Front page. Let me see. Clyde Halliday of Doonesville, jailed in Modoc City. Paper come out this morning. After Bob read it, him leave town. How'd the news reach Doonesville so soon? Well, it come by telegraph. You think Bob go see Clyde? He may have. We'll go back to Modoc City to look for him. Easy. Easy, fella. Easy, fella. Come on, sir. Mid-afternoon on the day before Thanksgiving, the masked man and Tonto reached the hills above Modoc City. The Lone Ranger sent Tonto to town to make inquiries about Bob Halliday. Unaware of the fact that the 15-year-old boy was already in the community, deeply troubled by his brother's capture, Bob went to the jail with a small derringer concealed in the sleeve of his jacket. Assuming that the Lone Ranger and Tonto had brought him to town, the marshal greeted Bob warmly then took him to Clyde's cell. Call me when you're through talking, Bob. Oh, yes, sir. I'll come and let you out. Bob, how'd you find out I was here? I read it in the Herald. How'd they get the news? I don't know. Well, you, you shouldn't have come, youngster. Oh, I had to come, Clyde. I, I wanted to ask you if it's true. Uh -huh. What it said in the paper about, about you being a crook. You're not, are you? Of course not, Bob. It's all a mistake. I'll be out soon. You can get out now. My Derringer. It's loaded, Clyde. I brought it from home. Didn't the marshal search you before he let you see me? No. No, here, Clyde. I'll need a horse to get away from here. I rented one for you at the livery stable. It's at the hitch rack outside with mine. Good boy. Now call the marshal. A few minutes later, Marshal Jim unlocked the cell door to let Bob Halliday out. There you are. The boy left the cell. Then... Now I'm coming hey, out. What? Would you get that gun? I gave it to him. I'll keep him covered, Bob. Take his gun. Then we'll tie and gag him and lock him in the cell. Clyde and his brother were ready to leave the Marshal's office when Toto entered. Holding Marshal Jim's gun, Clyde said... You're covered, Injun. You? Step inside. Oh, you get free. My brother Bob freed me. Close the door and lock it, Bob. Right. We've got 
got to get out of here, Clyde. Not before I deal with this redskin. He'll break big mistake. Lone Ranger capture what? you once and him get you again. Lone Ranger? That's right. Clyde, is that true? Of course it isn't. Take the engine's gun. We'll give him the same treatment we gave the marshal. Then we'll clear out of here. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one the happy, happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties and do, do, do an okay. Okay. That goes for the star wherever you are. Take Barbara Ann Scott, figure skating champion from the Northland. Watch her on this one. Barbara Ann's good. Now, there is a champ who's a real Wheaties fan. Sure helps to keep a gal up on her toes. A guy, too. Take Bob Lemon, who pitches a lot of ball for the Cleveland Indians. Lemon knows what champions know. Wheaties for breakfast, away you go. Gosh, no wonder the champs of tomorrow are eating Wheaties today. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. Now to continue. Leading Tonto, tied and gagged with a marshal, Clyde and Bob rode out of town under cover of early darkness. Get up, get up, get up. As they headed for the hills east of Modoc City, the two brothers were silent and thoughtful. Remembering the unmistakable honesty in the Indian's voice disturbed Bob. For the first time in his life, he doubted his brother's word. They drew rein in the hills some time later. Ho, ho, there, ho, ho now. We'll camp here for the night, Bob. Oh, easy. No one will find us here. Steady. I hope not. In his eagerness to see Dan Reed as soon as possible, the Lone Ranger left his camp in the hills and late that night entered Modoc City. He saw Tonto's horse scout at the hitch rail in front of the marshal's office. As he drew rein, he heard muffled shouts from inside the darkened building. The masked man dismounted quickly and hurried into the office. Get us out of here! He found a lamp on the marshal's desk. As he struck a match to light it, Marshal Jim called from the cell block. Back here in the cell! Let us off! Just a moment, Marshal Jim. He must let me. Hello, what happened? Halliday's brother Bob came here. I thought you sent him, so I let him see Clyde. The youngster smuggled a gun to that crook. So that's it. Yeah, Clyde tied and gagged us and locked us up. Me, get hands free of ropes. A few minutes ago. And Tonto freed me. Where's the key to the cell? Uh, Halliday probably took it with him. But I have an extra one in my desk drawer. All right, I'll get it. When the door was open, the Lone Ranger asked, How long have you been here? Three or four hours. Everyone in town went to doggone busy getting ready for the holiday tomorrow. We might have been found before this. Dan's due to reach town in half an hour. Isn't that right? You go ahead and meet him, mister. I'll go after Halliday and his brother. The reunion with Dan Reed was a happy one. Standing in the darkness near the station platform, the masked man gripped Dan's hand. Dan, I'm glad you're here. Oh, it's good to be here, sir. We're plenty glad to see you, Dan. Before I left the East, I had a letter from Ma Hain. She said you left Victor at the Henry House stable. Uh uh. Me go get him now. We'll wait for you, Toto. But Ma Hank, the 200 pound landlady of the Henry House Hotel, refused to let Toto take Dan's horse until the Indian made a promise. Thanksgiving's the time for friends to get together. Oh, that's right, but... Tonto, uh, you and the masked man and Dan are the best friends I've got. I'm planning a little private party, a feast fit for a king. And you three had better be here to eat it. Mm, that sounds heap plenty good. Oh, scout. Oh, Victor. When he rejoined his friends, Tonto told Dan and the Lone Ranger what Ma said. 
I'll bet my Thanksgiving dinner will be fit for a king. Would you like to accept your invitation, Dan? Well, well I want to be with you and Tonto, sir. Then we'll all go to Ma's place for dinner. Fine. Uh, uh, now we'll head for camp easy. Easy, big fella. Come on, come on, come on. In the hills, on their way back to the well-concealed camp, the masked man and Tonto caught sight of a distant campfire. The Lone Ranger studied it for a moment, then signaled a halt. Who's the All right, just mount. The masked man and his companions cautiously approached the fire. You look at face of fella near fire. Clyde Halliday. Uh, Bob Halliday with him. Are they friends of yours? Halliday broke out of jail in town then. Oh, Clyde lied to Bob. Tell him him frame for stage robbery. It'd be better for the boy to know the truth. And that's what me think. It's not good, young boy, travel with crook. Dodging law. Come on. Neither Clyde nor Bob were aware of their presence until they stepped into the firelight. What? Don't reach for your gun, Clyde. Mine's hosted. I'll accommodate you if you want gunplay. Are you a man? Yes, but I'm not an outlaw, Bob. Are you... Are you the Lone Ranger? That's right. I figured that Indian was telling the truth. Uh huh. He tell truth, Bob. I... I've heard the Lone Ranger uses silver bullets in his guns. Without replying, the masked man slipped a cartridge from his gun belt and handed it to Bob, while Toto watched Clyde. For a moment, the boy studied it. I... It is silver. Bob, I... Why didn't you tell me the truth, Clyde? I... I didn't want you to know about it. You couldn't have concealed the facts indefinitely, Clyde. You were bound to learn the truth sooner or later. Maybe so. You're not the first man to make a mistake. You'll not be the last. Now, if you go to jail, pay your debt to the law, and go straight when you get out, you'll be all right. I, I wanted to take care of Bob. I have a good friend in Modoc City who'll be glad to take care of him till you're free. Who's that? Ma Hank, the owner of the Henry House Hotel. Don't reach for your gun, Halliday. Ho, ho, ho. Hold on, boy. Hello, Marshal Jim. Uh, Where'd you come from, mister? We were on our way back to our own camp when we saw Clyde's fire. Yeah, I've been following his trail, but I lost it. I was riding through the hills trying to pick up his tracks again when I saw the fire. How are you, Marshal Jim? Oh, fine, Dan. Easy, city boy. <laughs> Keep your hands clear of your holsters till I take those guns, Clyde. Don't worry, I'll not try a fast move. I know it, humbly. You're not, Lee, Clyde. I... I'm sorry about this, Bob. But... Uh, Clyde, just... Promise me things will be different when you get out of jail. Different? Promise me you'll, you'll stay on the Lone Ranger's side of the law. I, I'd promise anything if I thought you wouldn't hold things against me, partner. Let's let's shake on that quiet. Thanks, Bob. Gosh, I, I, I guess I'm in trouble, too, for helping you bust out of jail. That's right, youngster. <laughs> Now on, you'd better not let me catch you carrying a gun. Bob, while the marshal takes Clyde back to town, why don't you spend the night in our camp? But with you and Tano? And Dan Reed. Gosh, I, I'd like that. Is it all right with you, Marshal Jim? Sure, if you say so. We'll bring Bob to town with us tomorrow. We have an appointment with Ma Hank for Thanksgiving dinner. Good enough, mister. I'll see you at the Henry House. <laughs> Late the next day, the Lone Ranger, Dan, Tonto, and Bob Halliday reached town. While Bob went to the jail to see his brother, the masked man entered Ma Hank's kitchen and explained the boy's situation to the big-hearted landlady. He's too proud to accept charity, but he needs a home. Why, land sakes alive, mister. Homer and I'll be glad to keep the boy with us till his brother's out of jail. By doing chores around here, he'll be able to earn his room and board. Thanks, Mrs. Henry. Bob's a good boy, and with someone to keep him on the right track, I think he'll be a fine man. Don't you worry about him. I will look after him as if he were our own son. Say, I hope you brought him along for dinner. He'll be here. Right now, he's at the jail with his brother. I already sent a tray to the jail for the prisoner. In that case, I know he'll eat well. Oh, thanks for the compliment, mister. 
Now, as soon as the lad comes, we'll be ready to eat. When Bob arrived at the hotel, the Lone Ranger took him to the dining room and introduced him to Ma Hank and Uncle Homer, who sat at the large table with Tonto, Dan Reed, and Marshal Jim. As he looked at the incomparable feast Ma had prepared, Bob's eyes missed it with tears. He choked back a sob of gratitude as he sat down between Marshal Jim and the Lone Ranger. I'm glad to see you, Bob. Now, I want you to eat hearty when we start. Just thanks, ma'am. I'm, I'm mighty hungry. <laughs> Friends, I'm mighty happy we're all together. Now, Mr. Red. Yes? How about saying a few words of grace before we start? Very well. We'll bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads in our prayer of thanksgiving, we hope that Americans everywhere will remember the true meaning of this day and give thanks, not only for the bounty of our land, but for the many blessings we enjoy. We are thankful for those men and women who came before us to clear a wilderness and plant it with seeds of freedom. We are grateful that the founders of our country sought thy guidance before they set down the principles by which Americans have lived, and for which they still bravely die. May we forever cherish the custom of humbly giving thanks to thee. Amen. 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 And, and please, God, bless the Lone Ranger. <laughs> copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.